Good morning, everyone. I better bang the gavel here. Good morning. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we'll do, do that. Fred, are we good to do another good morning? <laughs> Take two. Okay, good morning, everyone. I call to order this 17th meeting of the Public Utility Commission for calendar year 2012. I ask that everybody join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The first matter on this morning's agenda is the approval of the August 30th public meeting minutes and the editor of the minutes for our meeting is Commissioner Cawley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I have reviewed those minutes and uh, move that they be adopted as submitted. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the minutes are approved as submitted. It's a pleasure to welcome to the podium this morning to begin our public meeting, Ms. Cheryl Walker-Davis. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Good morning. Excuse me. May it please this honorable commission on behalf of your various offices and bureaus, we present for your consideration and disposition the following agenda items. We will be starting this morning with the case of special interest appearing on the Carrion agenda, that being the petition of the Pico Energy Company Electric Division requesting approval of its default service plan for the period June, 13, June of 2013 through May of 2015. This is a binding poll of the outstanding issues in the case. We would remind the audience that the poll is simply a vehicle through which the commission will make disposition of the various issues in this case. The sheets that the audience has received are not intended to describe fully the positions of the parties, nor all of the issues that may be contained in this case. The commission has based its decision on the record of this proceeding, the recommendations of the administrative law judge, uh, as well as the, uh, the briefs and exceptions of the parties. With that having been said, the first issue, residential class procurement, Reese's 10% spot purchases proposal. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I too support the ALJ position. The results are five to zero. Issue number two, medium commercial class procurement. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I too support the ALJ position. The results for this polling are five to zero. Issue number three, large commercial and industrial class procurement. Commissioner Whitmer. Risa. Commissioner Cawley. Risa. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. Risa. I too support the Risa position. The results on this polling are four to one. Issue number four, extension of supply contracts beyond May 31st, 2015. Commissioner Whitmer. Risa. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I too support the ALJ position. Polling results on this matter are four to one. Issue number five, load cap. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I too support the ALJ position. Polling results are five to zero. Issue number six, which appears on pages six and seven, rate design and cost recovery, reconciliation of default service costs and revenues for residential small and medium commercial classes. Commissioner Whitmer. Dominion IGS. Commissioner Cawley. Dominion IGS. Commissioner Gardner. Dominion IGS. Vice Chairman Coleman. Dominion IGS. I too support the Dominion IGS uh, results. The results on this polling case are five to zero. Issue number seven, appearing on pages eight through 11, rate design and cost recovery, EDC recovery of additional PJM costs, generation deactivation, NITS, RTEP, and expansion costs, and economic load response program costs. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Colley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. 
Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I, too, support the ALJ position. Polling results are 5 to 0. Issue number 8, appearing on page 12, rate design and cost recovery. Costs included in the GSA charge, recovery of, of incremental IT costs. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I, too, support the ALJ position. Polling results are 5 to 0. Issue number 9, appearing on page 13, rate design and cost recovery, rate making treatment of auction revenue rights. Commissioner Whitmer. Risa. Commissioner Cawley. Risa, and I think OCA says it even better. Commissioner Gardner. I concur with uh, Commissioner Cawley. Vice Chairman Coleman. Risa, OCA. I, too, support the Risa OCA position. Results are five to one, excuse me, four to one. Issue number 10, appearing on page 14, rate design and cost recovery, elimination of the alternative energy portfolio standard surcharge. Commissioner Whitmer. OCA. Commissioner Gawley. OCA. Commissioner Gardner. OCA. Vice Chairman Coleman. OCA. I, too, support the OCA position. Results of this polling case are 5 to 0. Issue number 11, appearing on pages 15 and 16, Rate design and cost recovery. Reese's proposal of, uh, and the added to the price to compare, noting Commissioner Whitmer's statement. I'd like to first recognize Commissioner Whitmer for purposes of her statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like my statement entered into the record as if I had read it in its entirety. Before the Commission today is a binding poll on various issues related to the petition of PICO for approval of its default service plan. The proposals put forth in our intermediate work plan and the company's proposed default service plan represent useful and prudent steps toward transforming the competitive retail electricity market in the Commonwealth. Throughout this proceeding, RISA proposed an adder on the price to compare in order to recover default service costs that may remain bundled within distribution charges. As I stated in the first energy default service proceeding, while I agree with the ALJ's rejection of the adder, I do believe that Reese's proposal raises serious issues that require further examination by the Commission. As a proponent of competitive markets, I believe that it is in the public interest to ensure that the default service price to compare properly reflects current market conditions and not include other charges that serve to artificially inflate or depress this very important price signal. I find merit in the proposal put forth by Reese as it may help to remove the impact of non-market issues on the price to compare. At the same time, however, I also believe that these proposals deserve a fuller vetting within the context of the Commission's retail market investigation and the proceeding initiated by Commissioner Colley at the July 19, 2012 public meeting related to the default service interim reconciliation guidelines. Thank you, Commissioner Whitmer. Now we'll call the vote. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I, too, support the ALJ position. Polling results are 5 to 0, noting the statement of Commissioner Whitmer. Issue number 12, appearing on page 17, EGS opt-in, competitive offer program, and small commercial customer eligibility. Commissioner Whitmer. Risa. Commissioner Cawley. Risa. Commissioner Gardner. Risa. Vice Chairman Coleman. Risa. I, too, support the RISA position. Polling results are 5 to 0. Issue number 13, appearing on page 18, EGS opt-in, competitive offer program, and the residential customer eligibility. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Colley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I, too, support the ALJ position. Polling results are 5 to 0. With regard to issue number 14, appearing on page 19, pertaining to the EGS opt-in competitive offer program and the composition of product offer, there is the motion of Commissioner Whitmer that also covers issues number 26 and 27. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Whitmer for purposes of her motion. Commissioner Whitmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like my motion entered into the record as if I'd read it in its entirety. Before the Commission is the petition of PICO for approval of their default service plan from the period of June 1st, 2013 to May 31st, 2015. 
This motion eliminates the need to conduct a bonding poll on the following issues. Composition of the product offer for the electric generation supplier opt-in competitive offer program and the, recover and the recovery of program costs for proposed retail market enhancements. In addition, this motion will propose minor adjustments to the company's EG EGS opt-in competitive offer program in order to align it with the Commission's order entered August 16, 2012 in the first Energy DSP final order. As proposed, PICO's opt-in product would have been obtained through a one-time request for proposal process that would have been established on the basis of a percentage discount from the price to compare that equals at least 5% beginning June 1, 2013. Further, while the company included a $50 bonus as part of its opt-in program, the bonus would only be paid after opt-in offer acceptance and the customer's completion of three complete billing cycles. This general pricing scheme was supported or unopposed by a majority of the parties and, as a result, the ALJ recommended adoption of the company's proposal. Upon further review of our directives in the Intermediate Work Plan Final Order, as well as the recommended decision and exceptions in this proceeding, I recommend that the ALJ's recommendation be modified. Rather than accept PICO's proposal of a six billing cycle fixed price that is at least 5% below the applicable price to compare for the quarterly period beginning June 1, 2013, with a $50 bonus payment that would be paid by the EGS after offer acceptance and the customer's completion of three complete billing cycles. Instead, I propose adoption of the following opt-in product. A 12-month product comprised of a $50 bonus, a four-month guaranteed 5% off the price to compare at the time of enrollment, and an EGS provided fixed price product for the remaining eight months. Because the opt-in program duration and, mod and product have been modified, I also recommend that in order to receive the bonus, customers must remain in the opt-in program for at least the initial four-month period. Finally, in order to effectively evaluate the terms of this program, the Commission will require that participating EGSs provide the terms and conditions of the eight-month opt-in fixed pricing offer for the PUC to review. With these improvements, I believe that this product offering will be attractive enough to garner EGS support and, more importantly, customer participation in the opt-in program. However, because this product offering differs from that proposed by the company, PICO's proposals and the ALJ's recommendations regarding the role of the independent monitor, as well as the selection of winning EGSs and associated customer assignment, will have to be modified also. Therefore, within 60 days, in addition to providing the updated proposals on EGS payment for the market enhancement programs, as explained below, the company, EGSs, and other interested parties will also be required to file with the Commission an updated proposal for the role of the independent monitor, opt-in program EGS selection, and customer assignment that will be aligned with this revised opt-in program design. Regarding the issue of recovery of program, con of program costs for proposed retail market enhancements, the ALJ recommended adoption of PICO's proposed 0.3% purchase of receivables discount, which would comply with the Commission's directive in the Intermediate Work Plan Final Order that EGSs be responsible for these program costs. While I strongly agree with the ALJ that our position articulated in the Intermediate Work Plan Final Order was and continues to be the, that EGSs should be responsible for market enhancement program costs, I do not believe that we have sufficient information to adopt PICO's proposal today. At this time, and upon review of the EGS's position in this proceeding, I have significant concerns that the POR discount method for allocating costs may be a significant barrier to EGS participation. Accordingly, the company, EGSs, and interested parties should be directed to resubmit a plan or proposals within 60 days for commission review and approval addressing how participating EGSs or customers will pay for market enhancements approved in this default service plan proceeding. The resolution of these issues is particularly important as they are the cornerstone to the success of these programs. The thrust of the Intermediate Work Plan Final Order was to suggest that programs would be implemented during this round of default service plans 
in order to bolster customer participation in the retail electric market. However, these steps can only jumpstart the market if they are carried out. We urge the EGSs and company to come to an agreement on how these costs will be allocated in order to carry out these programs and bring more retail customers to market. Therefore, I move the Office of Special Assistance draft an appropriate order consistent with this motion. Second. Any discussion, any objections? Hearing none, the motion regarding EGS opt-in competitive offer program be approved uh, unanimously on this polling case. With regard to issue number 15, appearing on page 20, EGS opt-in competitive offer program, customer participation top cap, and opt-in auction program. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I, too, support the ALJ position. Results on this polling case are 5 to 0. Issue number 16, EGS opt-in competitive offer program, supplier participation load cap. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I, too, support the ALJ position. Results in this matter are 5 to 0. Issue number 17, appearing on page 22, EGS opt-in competitive offer program, PICO's proposed application process and EGS terms and conditions opt-in program. Commissioner Whitmer. Risa. Commissioner Cawley. Risa. Commissioner Gardner. Risa. Vice Chairman Coleman. Risa. I too support the Risa position. Results on this, on this polling case are five to zero. Issue number 18, EGS standard offer program, composition of product offer. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I too support the ALJ position. Results are 5 to 0 on this case. Issue number 19, appearing on page 24, EGS standard offer program, types of customer calls eligible for presentation of referral program. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I too support the ALJ position. Results are 5 to 0. Issue number 20, appearing on page 25, EGS standard offer program, commencement date of the EGS standard offer program. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Cawley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I too support the ALJ position. Results are 5 to 0. Issue number 21, EGS Standard Offer Program, PICO's proposed application process and EGS terms and conditions. Commissioner Whitmer. Risa. Commissioner Cawley. Risa. Commissioner Gardner. Risa. Commissioner, uh, Vice Chairman Coleman. Risa. I too support the Risa position. Results are five to zero. With regard to issue number 22, pertaining to the participation by low income customers in the proposed retail market enhancements, there is the motion of Commissioner Whitmer. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Whitmer for purposes of her motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like my motion entered into the record as if I'd read it in its entirety. One of the contested issues in today's proceeding is whether low-income customers should be eligible to participate in the default service program retail market enhancements, including the opt-in competitive offer and standard offer programs. PICO proposed excluding CAP customers from the RME programs and requested that the Commission wait to decide this issue until the Universal Service Subgroup completes its work under the retail market's investigation. Alternatively, RISA argued that CAP customers should be included in PICO's proposed RMEs at the commencement of its default service plan. The Commission is committed to ensuring that all customers, including CAP customers, are eligible to participate in the competitive retail electricity market. While I am very supportive of Reese's position on the issue, especially with regard to portability of CAP credits, PICO currently does not allow shopping for customers enrolled in its CAP program. And I recognize that there are a number of issues that must be addressed in order to effectuate this change. However, rather than delay the ability of CAP customers to take part in the default service plan RME programs, I recommend that we direct PICO to develop a plan that by January 1st, 2014, allows its CAP customers to purchase their generation supply from electric generation suppliers. As a way to further assist the company, the Commission's Office of Competitive Market Oversight 
should be directed to work with PICO to ensure that, to the extent possible, the DSP RME programs are available to these customers and to provide a path that allows both CAP credits and LIHEAP funds to be used by customers when choosing an entity to provide their generation service. Beyond allowing CAP customers to participate in the DSP REM programs, this action will ensure that all customers have the ability to avail themselves in the full benefits of retail electric competition. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gardner, you should not have done that. There's a pause. You know, it's Turning of the page, right? Exactly. Turn the page, make sure we have good flow. <laughs> um, there's might be a little I move. easy to get down the turnpike, but Turn. take your time. Okay, thank you. Apparently, or therefore I move, the Office of Special Assistance draft an appro appropriate order consistent with this motion. Second. Now, Commissioner Gardner. I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Any further discussion on this motion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion submitted by Commissioner Whitmer is approved and uh, regarding participation by low-income customers in a proposed retail market enhancement, five to zero. With regard to issue number 23, appearing on page 28, the additional proposed retail market enhancements, time of use offering. Commissioner Whitmer. OCA. Commissioner Colley. OCA. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. OCA. I, too, support the OCA position. Polling results on this matter are four to one. Issue number 24, additional proposed retail market enhancements, new or moving customer referral program. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Colley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I, too, support the ALJ position. Polling results are five to zero. Issue number 25 on page 30, additional proposed retail market enhancements and the referral of Pico Wind customers. Commissioner Whitmer. ALJ. Commissioner Colley. ALJ. Commissioner Gardner. ALJ. Vice Chairman Coleman. ALJ. I too support the ALJ position. Rolling results are five to zero. Should be noted that both issues number 26 and issue 27 have already been disposed of with Commissioner, Commissioner Whitmer's motion at issue number 14. That concludes the binding poll. Turning now to the beginning of the regular agenda and matters on behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, it is recommended that the Commission adopt all items appearing on pages one two, three, and four, through and including the rate increase request of the Clarion County Taxi, Inc. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Bureau of Audits, it is recommended that the Commission adopt all three items appearing on page five through and including the uh, Wellsboro Electric Company Generation Supply Service Rate. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Bureau of Consumer Services, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the recommendation pertaining to West Penn Power's Universal Service and Energy Conservation Plan. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Director of Regulatory Operations, with regard to the investigation of Pennsylvania's retail electricity market, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the recommendation pertaining to the Office of Competitive Market Oversight and State Proposal, as well as the secretarial letter uh, and the release of those documents for discussion purposes. So moved. Second. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Cawley for purposes of his statement. Commissioner Cawley. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> I ask that my uh, rather lengthy concurring and dissenting statement be placed on the record as if I had read it in its entirety. This is uh, not the culmination of a very lengthy process, but uh, nearly so. Um, as I understand it, uh, we are issuing a secretarial letter uh, that will have attached a proposed end state uh, program, and that uh, interested parties will have an opportunity uh, in a subsequent uh, conference call to discuss this with our Office of Competitive Market Oversight 
staff, and eventually we will, perhaps as soon as our November 8th public meeting, uh, issue a tentative order. So we are nearly at the end of a process that started in April of 2011. <clears throat> there is uh, much, much to like in the proposal released today with today's secretarial letter, but not, in my view, enough. Uh, therefore, I am going to respectfully dissent and be counted as a negative vote because the key reform in the proposal is too inadequate to achieve what is truly needed to bring the benefits of electricity choice to most Pennsylvanians who receive service from an investor-owned electric company. Uh, the proposal's chief reform uh, would deal with supply uh, and uh, shorten the default supply period, making it more market sensitive, which uh, helps uh, with a more apples to apples comparison with uh, electric generation supply offers. I think that that has some benefits, which I'll describe in a moment, but I would go farther and adopt a competitive retail opt-out program, which I believe would better provide supply prices for consumers. Briefly described, multiple electric generation suppliers would bid for the right to make energy supply offers to large segments of default customers. That is to large tranches, so-called tranches or groups of default customers who, who have not chosen an electricity supplier and instead of to stayed on default service. Uh, a cap would be placed on the number of customers anyone EGS could win, and to promote market diversity, smaller but financially secure to the Commission's satisfaction, EGSs would be given an opportunity to win, so-called win, a share of the available customers. Winning EGSs would offer a fixed price, presumably lower than the electric distribution company's default price for a year to those customers that it won in the auction. There would be no obligation, however, on the part of the customer to stay with that winning EGS. A customer receiving an offer from the EGS could accept it but still be able to switch to another supplier or to back to default service within the year or reject it by opting out. In other words, saying, uh, I don't accept your offer and I'm going to stay with default service. It does not appear to me that merely changing the underlying supply portfolio will have a significant impact on encouraging most customers to shop for lower cost supply alternatives that are readily available on the Commission's website and actively marketed daily by numerous EGSs. I believe that only by removing the barriers related to the current default service market structure uh, that the full benefits of competitive markets can be delivered to consumers. Adopting a more short-term market-based default service will probably lead to lower long-term default prices to consumers, likely but not necessarily with even lower EGS offers, and it will remove potential boom-bust cycles in Pennsylvania's maturing retail electricity markets. But making only that major reform, I believe, deserves the 70% of Pennsylvania customers who rely on the Commission to do what is necessary to make electricity choice really work. 
They rely on us to fashion the program with legislative help if necessary to make it as easy as possible for them to make a decision in their best interests. And I further believe that with the assurance conveyed by a commission-backed opt-out process, <clears throat> customers will accept and even welcome the need to decide between staying one year with a competitively determined supplier offering a significantly lower price than the default one, or opting to stay with the higher default rate. And I wish to emphasize that I'm not making the choice for them. They can either stay with the offer, or they can either accept the offer, or they can stay uh, with the higher price. That's up to them. I'm merely suggesting a process that makes, it, makes a decision easier for them. My compliments to our, and thanks to our Office of Competitive Market, uh, 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 our Office of Competitive Market, uh, what is ACMO stand? Oversight. Oversight. Is that what they've been doing, oversight? They've been helping us, and I want to thank them. They've labored hard to move us forward, but alas, not far enough. Uh, and I wish to also make very clear that I, I make this suggestion and these remarks uh, with respect to my colleagues who I admit with reasonable minds can differ with my views. Thank you, Commissioner Colley. I also have a statement that I'd like to have entered into the record as if I read it in its entirety. It's about 15 pages long, and we're going to give you the abbreviated version. Um, but let me start. I, I'd like to see out in the audience a show of hands. How many of you have picked an alternative generation supplier here in Pennsylvania? Good. I, I, I feel much better now. But we, we, uh, we're early into this, and uh, as you've heard me say, I sometimes am deemed an impatient regulator. But the fact of the matter is, and to kudos to this commission, as Commissioner Cawley mentioned, this commission staff through our Office of Competitive Market Oversight, uh, my colleagues, and everybody that participated in our en banc hearing process, um, I think it's yielded some good uh, opportunities for this commission to really, one, as Commissioner Cawley just alluded to, uh, avert what, we, what we're very concerned about is a potential boom-bust cycle uh, heading out into 2015, which would be a disaster for consumers, all of us in this room, if suppliers left the Pennsylvania marketplace. Um, and I also, um, for the record, I personally agree with uh, Commissioner Cawley's opinion on many of the issues that he mentioned in his statement. Um, but now I've become more of a realist in terms of what we can do, uh, what we can garner support for, and what I call the, the magical formula. Uh, you don't have, a, have to have an MBA from the Wharton Business School to understand that you need 102, 26, and 1 to advance some of the causes that are outcomes of the, of the en banc hearing process here at the Commission. And um, I have been told before that we need to be more bold in our approach towards providing customers uh, new, new, new product offerings. And, and uh, I think what we've put forth here today is incorporating all of the ideas that were presented to us, from low-income advocates to the supplier community, to our regulated utilities, to industrial customers, to small business customers, to school districts. Uh, I think uh, we took into account all of those different constituencies when making some of the decisions here today with the end state goal. Um, and and let, me, let me wrap up on this note. I, um, I think it's certainly a work in progress. I've, I've said this before, no disrespect to former Chairman Quain, who was, as I like to refer to him, the godfather of competition here. And if he's listening today, he, he'll probably get a smile when I say that. But there were things that needed to get done in 1996 that other states did. And it was a heavy lift at the time. And I, I don't want to play revisionist history here, but that was a heavy lift that needed to get done. And the circumstances here in Pennsylvania were much different back then. Um, I was probably fresh out of undergraduate school at the time. So I, I didn't know much about this, Commissioner Cawley, but I know you did. And you were in the, you were in the trenches on this issue. Undergrad, Chairman? 91. 
a couple years out. I still wet behind the ears, Commissioner Gardner. But uh, anyway, um, there were different circumstances back then. And uh, Pennsylvania is not Texas. I understand that. Uh, Texas has, by all benchmarks, by all metrics, one of the most robust, if not the most robust retail market in the country. And someday I'd like to see us get there. But what we're submitting here today is a secretarial letter that is going to seek additional input from all these constituencies and provide us, hopefully in early November, a tentative order to move forward. Um, if there's one thing I'd like to say amongst the five of us is, one, the collegiality behind putting this work plan forth. Every one of us, our staffs, Karen Mallory, and everybody that was involved in the ACMO effort and continue to be involved in the ACMO effort, uh, we thank you, because I want to say this today, thank you for a job well done. Uh, and for any of you out there, and I heard it, one thing you don't want to do with me is tell me that we're not going to accomplish this. And I've heard some of you say, ah, oh, they're just going through this process. There's not going to be any outcome. Um, I didn't stutter when we said, when we started the process back in post the Allegheny First Energy merger under then Co Chairman uh, Cawley's leadership, that we were going to see outcomes from this retail market investigation. I firmly believe that we're taking a big step here this morning in moving forward with the secretarial letter. It's a work in progress. Uh, at the end of the day, I think we're setting up a market design where if customers don't want to leave the mothership, as I've used this example before, my grandmother will never leave Beneficial Savings Bank. It's the bank of the Roman Catholic Church in Philadelphia. It was where I got my first passbook savings account in Woodland, Delaware County. I left. I think I've left beneficial bank five times over. But we don't want to force customers to make a decision that they don't want to make. But I want to agree with Commissioner Cawley. These customers do not have a problem picking their cable provider. They don't have a problem picking their cell phone provider. They don't have an issue when they want to go get coffee in the morning, whether they want to go to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or Wawa. There's choices all around them. And so what we're trying to do here this morning is really put a roadmap forward that provides, one, again, we want to avert this boom-bust cycle. Two, if customers don't want to make an affirmative choice to leave the mothership, let's not force them to do that. We get that. We've heard that. But to the mothership, stop the game playing. This whole issue of reconciliation, uh, some of you have had a complete debacle around offering things in Act 129 known as time of use rates, and we had to give you a life preserver to get you out of that business. Um, we're taking those steps, and Commissioner Whitmer, to your credit here this morning, what you did with low-income customers, um, I will have a statement here later in public meeting, but we think all Pennsylvanians should have the opportunity to, pr pr to choose an electric generation supplier and save real money on their monthly electric bill. And Commissioner Cawley, I want to commend you again because you have been steadfast in your commitment to competitive markets. Um, and um, I wish I was there in 1996 because between you and me and Vice Chairman Coleman and Commissioner Gardner and Commissioner Whitmer, I think Commissioner Quain would have listened to us. <laughs> he may have taken the right step. But the circumstances were different then than where they are today. So with that in mind, I'll get off my uh, soapbox. I'm not running for political office, by the way. But I think what we've done here today is a reasonable approach. It's a work in progress. A tentative order will be forthcoming. I encourage everybody in this room to participate in the process. I know you will. I see some heads nodding. And I also want to say to those of you who have shopped, good job. Go out there and spread the word to customers. We have a great opportunity here. Now, I didn't. I didn't taunt you with how many of you have picked a gas supplier. <laughs> we want to go there? Because that's the next RMI, ladies and gentlemen. That's the next RMI. Judge Rainey's like, oh, my God. Do we have to do this? We know we have a problem with retail shopping on the gas side of the ledger. And we've got to make improvements there. Now, Karen Mallory's probably like, oh, my God, he's just added to my workload here. <laughs> so with that in mind, um, again, not going to read my statement in its entirety. I want to thank, I didn't. I want to thank, uh, Commissioner Colley's rubbing off on me. Uh, I want to thank him and I want to thank my colleagues. We should be proud of what we've accomplished here today. 
And with that, is there any further discussion? Are there any objections? I'm going to note the objection of Commissioner Cawley, the respectful objection. And uh, this matter uh, will move forward with a four to one vote. Continuing with agenda items on behalf of the Office of Special Assistance, commencing on page eight of the public meeting agenda, we recommend the adoption of the first item pertaining to the settlement and the proceeding involving the Bureau of Transportation and Safety versus Metro Transportation of Pennsylvania. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. We recommend the adoption of the staff recommendation in the proceeding involving the application of Samir Wakaroch, noting the joint statement, Mr. Chairman, that you have with Vice Chairman Coleman. So moved. Second. We'd like to have our joint statement entered into the record as if it's read in its entirety. And I will apologize. I will be very brief here to my colleagues who are Commissioner Gardner's got his <laughs> looking at me like this. But, you know, I want to talk about this case. It, it, it involves a, um, a new business owner in uh, Tinicum Township, Delaware County. And when I read the, um, some of the, the um, evidentiary hearing um, testimony, we find that in this case, the, uh, the motor carrier applicant um, obviously was um, looking to be approved as a new taxi cab service in that part of, of, uh, of uh, southeastern Pennsylvania. And what happened was a protestant offered um, a rebuttal um, or intervened, excuse me, in regards to this applicant's filing for um, a certificate of public convenience. Now, after reviewing this case, uh, Vice Chairman Coleman and I are deeply concerned that the protest process afforded by our regulations may be creating, and I don't want to say may, is creating an unjustified expense and delay for our motor carrier applicants and the commission. I can look out at Judge Rainey with our administrative law judges when we have to go through this process. And I'm all about providing due process. But when you read this case, you'll note that the protestant um, basically um, put up roadblocks for this applicant. And uh, this morning, uh, Vice Chairman Coleman and I do not believe that the protest process uh, was in the best interest of the public, public interest. And to that extent, the current protesting process allows this type of behavior to take place. And I want to make a recommendation here this morning that the General Assembly should consider some type of remedial measures to eradicate these type of frivolous actions. Um, and again, I want to take this opportunity to thank the Vice Chairman for joining me in this, vice, in this uh, joint statement. And the statement is entered, entered into the record. Is there any further discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the uh, motion passes unanimously, noting the joint statement of myself and Vice Chairman Coleman. It is recommended that the Commission adopt all of the items appearing on pages 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 through and including the interconnection agreement or amendment to interconnection agreement of T-Mobile and Frontier Communications of Oswego River. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, it is recommended that the Commission adopt all of the recommendations appearing on pages 14, 15, and 16 through and including Pico Energy Company's uh, tariff supplement they're appearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Law Bureau, it is recommended that the Commission adopt all of the recommendations appearing on page 17 through and including the recommendation pertaining to the interim guidelines for natural gas distribution companies. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Office of Administrative Law Judge, we recommend the adoption of the first item pertaining to the People's Natural Gas Company uh, tariff filing proposing uh, changes to produce additional annual revenues, noting the statement of Commissioner Cawley. So moved. Second. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Cawley for purposes of a statement. Commissioner Cawley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I ask that it be placed on the record as if I had read it in its entirety. It uh, deals with a uh, producer enhancement services revenue uh, that was for services rendered to local producers. Uh, this is $3.8 million. Uh, my statement merely suggests that uh, the company be more specific uh, on how these ex uh, investments <coughs> will be expensed uh, or capitalized. And uh, I will leave it at that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? 
Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes five to zero, noting the statement of Commissioner Cawley. Uh, we recommend the adoption of ALJ Melillo's recommended decisions in the proceedings involving UGI Central Pan Gas and UGI Utilities, Inc., a gas division's annual purchase gas cost adjustments, noting the joint statement of Commissioners Cawley and Gardner. So moved. Second. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Cawley for purposes of this joint statement. Commissioner Cawley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Commissioner Gardner and I uh, uh, observe in this case um, that as a part of this settlement, the UGI companies will be adjusting their retainage factors based on a three-year rolling average of lost and unaccounted for and company use gas for the three years ending September 30th, 2012. Uh, the problem with this approach is that these figures will not be available until after the close of the record, or uh, in this case, uh, they were not, and given the impact of these rates on natural gas suppliers and customers, uh, we believe that the companies should modify the ending date of this data set so that the lost and unaccounted for and company use factors can be entered into cases such as this prior to the close of the record. This would give sufficient time for any parties to the proceeding to examine the data for accuracy and prudency. Any further discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously, noting the joint statement of Commissioners Cawley and Gardner. And it is recommended that the Commission adopt ALJ Vero's recommended decision with regard to Pico Energy Company's purchase gas cost adjustment proceeding. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. That concludes the presentation of regular agenda items. Turning now to the carrying agenda, it should be noted that the case of special interest pertaining to PICO's default service plan has already been considered by the commission. With regard to the, uh, the proceeding involving First Energy Company's uh, default service plans and the petitions for reconsideration they're appearing, we recommend the adoption of the staff recommendation, noting your joint statement, Mr. Chairman, along with Commissioner Whitmer. So moved. Second. I'd like to start by uh, enter, I'd like to have our joint excuse me statement entered into the record as if, if we read it in its entirety before the commission this morning for consideration are several petitions for reconsideration of the commission's order disposing of First Energy Electric Distribution Company's default service plans. One of these petitions for reconsideration was filed by a coalition for affordable utility services and energy efficiency in, here in the Commonwealth. Cause takes issue with the Commission's decision to allow customers receiving benefits from the company's customer assistance programs to participate in the retail market enhancement programs in the default service plan. In support of its position, Cause correctly points out that the Electric Generation Choice Act and Competition Act states the Commission must, at a minimum, continue the protections, policies, and services that now assist customers who are low income to afford electric service. Cause also points out that the Commission, in its retail market investigation intermediate work plan order, stated that CAP customers should not be subject to harm as a result of their participation in the retail enhancement programs. Cause somehow uses this language to reach the dubious conclusion that the Commission must prevent CAP customers from paying any rate that is above the default service rate and the only way to accomplish this is to prevent these customers from participating in programs designed to save participants money. In our view here this morning, cause distorts the plain language and the meaning of both the Competition Act and the Intermediate Work Plan Order in doing so. There are several fatal flaws in cause's thinking. First, looking at the language of the Competition Act, it states simply that the Commission must maintain a, the level of low-income support that existed at the time of the Act back in 1996. For the record, the Commission has clearly done this, and in fact, low-income support programs have greatly expanded since that time. The second point we want to mention here this morning is that CAUSE ignores the fact that, that in the Intermediate Work Plan, we define subject to harm as being loss of benefits. Realizing that the company's cap benefits are portable, there is no risk to those customers in, the, in losing benefits as a result of participating in any retail enhancement programs. Third, and most egregious, is, the implicit, uh, is that implicit in the cause's argument is that the cap customers do not have the ability to make informed decisions regarding their electric suppliers. This is the theme that has reoccurred 
throughout the RMI process, both uh, from low-income advocates and older customers. We find this attitude not only misplaced, but incredibly misguided. CAP customers make hundreds of choices each week about how to spend their money, whether it be on to buy food, clothing, gasoline, telecommunication services, just to name a few. These customers are equally equipped to make informed choices regarding their electric generation supplier. Amazingly, cause experts witness in this proceeding testified that a process should be initiated to prevent CAP customers from ever choosing a competitive retail market supplier, despite the fact that Pennsylvanians electric customers have saved hundreds of millions of dollars as a result of choosing an electric competition, or excuse me, a competitive supplier. Imagine this scenario where a low-income customer were told they could only buy one brand of cereal because even though most of the other brands were less expensive, could be better quality as well, there, are, there, were, few, there were a few brands that were more expensive. We find Cause's position regarding shopping for electricity to be equally absurd, if not outright ludicrous. Lastly, as we said in our last public meeting, the utilities do not own their customers. We feel the need to remind the low-income advocates that they likewise do not own their constituents. This demeaning mindset is bad for consumers and it must stop. Okay, uh, any further discussion? <laughs> any objections? Hearing none, the um, motion passes unanimously, noting the joint statement of Commissioner Whitmer and myself. It is recommended that the commission adopt the remaining OSA item pertaining to Carl Hill versus Reading, Blue Mountain, and Northern Railroad. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On page three of the carry-in agenda, it is recommended that the commission ad adopt the Law Bureau recommendation uh, with regard to the reconsideration order in the Act 129 Energy Efficiency Program Phase 2 proceeding. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Turning now to the supplemental carry-in agenda, it is recommended that the commission adopt the recommendation of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services with regard to the application of Leather Stocking Gas Company to provide natural gas service, noting your statement, Mr. Chairman, which as well as the statement of Commissioner Gardner. So moved. Second. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Gardner for purposes of a statement. Commissioner Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like my statement to be entered into the record as if read in its entirety. Uh, today, the Commission approves the application filed by Leather Stock and Gas Company for a certificate of public convenience to provide natural gas distribution services to, to the residents and commercial customers in northern Susquehanna County. I am very pleased to vote to approve the application as Leather Stocking will provide the residents of Susquehanna County the opportunity to take advantage of this local resource. Leather Stocking will be looking to supply almost exclusively from Pennsylvania Marcellus Shell gas uh, production. Additionally, the approval of this application at today's public meeting provides an opportunity to notify Leather Stocking and to remind our existing small gas company of the Commission Small Gas Company Task Force. In January of 2009, the Commission directed the establishment of the Small Gas Task Force. Uh, the task force utilizes representatives from across the Commission to assist our small gas utilities to navigate the Commission myriad compliance and reporting re requirements. Services provided by the Small Gas Company Task Force includes assisting small gas companies manage the administrative filing process and insurance, ensuring compliance with Commission gas safety and financial regulations. I strongly encourage leather stocking and all other small gas companies to utilize the expertise of the Commission Small Gas Company Task Force. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Gardner. For a minute there, I thought you t stole my statement, but um, let me also echo what uh, Commissioner Gardner said. Um, That's because I went first. Um, I'm also pleased to uh, support this uh, new applicant um, into Pennsylvania. Leather Stocking uh, Gas Company LLC is a joint venture between Corning Natural Gas Corporation and Mirabia Holdings, two well-established New York companies. As Commissioner Gardner uh, mentioned in his statement, 
uh, 100 percent of the gas being procured for the distribution system um, in letter stocking will come from Marcellus shale gas, which is a, another um, untold story about the benefits of locally produced Marcellus shale gas. I also want to commend Commissioner Gardner for encouraging this new applicant to participate in our small uh, gas task force effort. I think it's a very good thing for them as they enter into Pennsylvania and make an investment. Um, finally, I'm proud to say this is a, a real good win for both residential and business customers in Susquehanna County because they're going to be able to save thousands of dollars a year by switching from high cost, a high cost heating source such as fuel oil and propane to a lower cost natural gas. Further, the areas that will be receiving service um, will also have a new economic development tool to keep the current and attract new businesses into the region. Again, I want to applaud the management of leather stocking for making this investment in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and I hope that it and other gas distribution utilities continue to look for ways to expand their systems to bring natural gas to more of Pennsylvania's consumers. And lastly, I want to take this opportunity to personally thank uh, the team here at the Commission under Paul Diskin's leadership, uh, also in our Law Bureau, Bob Young and Jim uh, Surskis and Tony Rometta for their support in getting this application ready for approval here this morning. Now, is there any further uh, discussion regarding this matter? Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, that concludes the presentation of public meeting agenda items. Are there any other items to come before the commission here this morning? No, Mr. Chairman. Hearing none, we are adjourned.